Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, creator of the Dot Destroyer book. We're going to review tonight with you a system called the reticuloendothelial system. Now, that's a word you might not heard too much. A lot of immunologists like to use that word. You probably know it as the mononucleophagocytic system. I like to think of it as the system of whip-ass. So what we're going to basically do is we're going to look at the star player tonight in the whip-ass system, and that's going to be the what? macrophage, right? So the macrophage is going to be the star of the show. So this whole system of mononucleophagocytic cells involves the, the process of phagocytosis, which you all know is cell eating. So what we're going to do is there's a lot of pathogens out to destroy us, whether it's bacteria or virus or worms, there's parasitic worms, there's fungi, there's a whole array of different organisms. So what we want to do is this system is going to be involved in phagocytic removal of those organisms as well as things that are aged or imperfect cells. If you remember, red blood cells only live about 128 days, 120 days or so, and they're removed. Platelets as well. Now, so the removal of foreign material, that's another thing that most people don't think of. For instance, asbestos, carbon particulates from the air, and all you fools out there who you have your whole body full of tattoos, mm -hmm. the macrophage loves tattoos. So if you ever see what's going to happen in about 50 years from now, or if you see an older person and you look in their arms or rest of their body and the tattoo is all eaten away, you can thank Mr. Macrophage. So the star of the show will be a macrophage. Um, I think I have a nice picture of it in my bio notes. And macrophages are derived from the monocytes. If you remember, what was an easy way I told you to remember that? The M&Ms. The M&Ms, don't forget, monocytes make macrophages. And sometimes we can see these macrophages fuse together to form these big, gigantic cells that you'll look at in histology course. Um, these are big, multinucleated cells known as the Langerhans giant cells. And they are involved in isolating pathogens. Once activated, the macrophages do get larger, they increase their lysosomal proteins, and they release ROS. I'm not sure you ever heard, Mark, do you know what an ROS is? It's a reactive oxygen species. And it can, it can include like an OH, an OH with a, with, a, with a radical, we sometimes write it like this, the hydroxyl radical, hydrogen peroxide, nitric oxide, superoxide. So these are the guys or the chemicals that are going to be used by the macrophages to basically break apart these pathogens. So the ROS, that is a very, very important system of highly reactive molecules and ions and stuff like that that are going to do some destruction. We have names for macrophages if they're in different locations. For example, if you remember, if they're in the liver, we call these macrophages cut for cells in the lungs, we call them alveolar macrophages, the spleen, we have splenic in the abdominal cavity, peritoneal, and even in the CNS, we call them microglial. The bottom line is these guys are macrophages. Now, another function of a macrophage besides phagocytic and taking up materials is they take up antigens, they digest it, and denature them and present them to cells, if you remember, known as T cells. So they also present them to the T cells for further destruction. Another lesser known cell, which you might have heard of, is called the dendritic cell. The dendritic cell is also derived from the monocytes in the bone marrow, and these are antigen presenting cells. It's always a test question, so be careful of that. So a dendritic cell is an antigen presenting cell, but if you ever looked at it, it has a lot of different extensions. So it has numerous cytoplasmic processes, allowing it to contact things like T cells, neutrophils, natural killer cells, and therefore they can communicate with them for destruction. Don't forget neutrophils are the most numerous on the white blood cell line, and the least numerous, anyone know? Remember the least numerous? Right, that's the basophil, um, remember that? These dendritic cells are found in areas such as skin, lymph nodes, spleen, thymus, and they have a very high percentage of glycomolecules on their surface, known as MHC2 molecules. So these MHC2 molecules are involved in attracting the T cells, 
and they activate the T cells. So as you can see, these dendritic cells um, also involved not only in antigen presenting, but also involved in T cell activation. That gives you a good idea about a specific population. The next time we're gonna have a lecture, I'm gonna go over all the different antibodies. If you remember, we had IgA, IgD, et cetera, and we'll go over all their properties. Um, we had a good question on the study group tonight, if you remember about the half-life, who's got the longest and the shortest half-life, so we'll learn all about that um, next class. All right, I'll see you guys in study group. Bye-bye.